by Greg Swenson in New York. He's a partner at the Brig McAdam corporate finance firm. Uh, thank you so much for joining me, Greg. Now, what do you consider this a serious threat? As we heard from John just now that it is a serious threat, but is it also the president-elect looking to potentially set the stage for renegotiating trade deals? What do you make of it? Yeah, I think it's probably all of the above, Isabel. I, you know, on, on one hand, it's a revenue tool, right? We want to extend the tax cuts uh, of 2017, so it's really important to this White House and to the Treasury to extend those tax cuts for economic growth, for wage growth, but then also protecting strategically important industries in the U.S. That's another benefit of tariffs. And then, of course, as John pointed out, it's a negotiating tool. You know, uh, arguably, as Scott Besson says, the, the new uh, Secretary of the Treasury, you know, it's the third leg in the stool. So, yeah, I would take these threats seriously, but I also think they'll be constructive ultimately and they'll be used um, appropriately to, you know, to, to the benefit of the U.S., but ultimately to the benefit of the world. And you've already seen a response from Mexican President Scheinbaum about, um, you know, reducing the, the flow of, of illegal human traffickers. Uh, the, reduce the flow of illegal migrants, but especially the flow of fentanyl into the U.S. So in, in a very, very odd way, it's already, it's already started to work. Just the threat of tariffs has already started to work. So, Greg, quite an effective tool by the president-elect, do you think? And, and do you think it will continue to, to uh, achieve what he hopes that it will? Or are there any ways that it could backfire on the U.S.? Well, sure. I think if there's, you know, ultimately too many trade retaliations from other countries that could affect. But I think for the most part, most countries have more to lose in a trade war than the U.S. does. So I think there'll be more cooperation from our trading partners, that's for sure. And it, it worked in the first term as well. I mean, in fact, the Biden administration kept many of the Chinese tariffs um, that, that Trump had put on. They kept them in place. And of course, the, the threats on Mexico in, the, in his first term actually worked in terms of the Remain in Mexico policy being supported by the Mexican government. So, you know, these are things that have worked. Yes, there's always a risk of, of higher prices um, due to tariffs, but that didn't really happen significantly in, the, in his first term. Inflation was extremely low. And so, so much of the risk of tariffs is offset by deregulation and tax reform, which was great for inflation, which is great for, for wage growth, for real wage growth. So we expect to see a lot of that again when you start to see the deregulation and the tax additional tax reform. And of course, the liberation of the, the energy sector, you know, uh, Scott Besson's arguing for 3 million barrels a day or uh, barrel equivalent in natural gas a day from the U.S. And that will lower prices across the board, not just on gasoline or petrol, but also on, on all the other products that are associated with oil, which is just about everything in the economy. Very interesting. Greg, Greg Swenson, he is a partner at the Brig McAdam corporate finance firm, live for us from New York. Thanks so much, Greg. Thanks, Isabel.